In this episode of the Stretch Goals Podcast, Scott and I are going to be talking about, is it time to fire your employee? This is the Stretch Goals Podcast, where each week we'll share insights and lessons learned based on our experiences as entrepreneurs. We'll challenge you to create ambitious goals as you start and grow your business. I'm your host, Robert Dickerson. And I'm Scott Davis. So Scott, I wanted to talk about this week, is it time to fire, fire your employee and just some some reasons that you might um, tell if, you know, if it's time, if they're not doing good work and um, maybe they are doing good work. And I I just wanted to share an experience that I just had where I had to um, actually get rid of a contractor and it wasn't necessarily because he wasn't doing the greatest work. Um, So I'll just tell you the story and then uh, you can give me your feedback too and and share your experiences. So I hired a contractor to help me with um, some front end development and he kind of passed all the different tests that I, that I put him through. And so I hired him and he started and uh, I went through and kind of listed out exactly what I wanted done. Um, so it was, it was pretty detailed actually. And uh, he, he started out doing the work and the work he was doing, I mean, it was okay. He was getting the work done, but he wasn't, he wasn't seeing the entire picture of what I was trying to do. He, like he wasn't, He wasn't testing all the different paths it needed to be. He was just doing exactly what I told him to and nothing beyond that. And I was trying to figure out, well, maybe I'm doing something wrong in terms of how I'm telling him to do so because I'm telling him exactly what to do. But he he wasn't really, you know, thinking larger term about, um, you know, what actually needed to be done and what, from a customer point of view, what they were looking at in terms of this feature. So I thought it'd be interesting to talk about. I, I, I had to let him go just because it, it wasn't really working out. I could kind of tell. And uh, I just want to get your, your insights on this. I mean, do you think it was something where I wasn't giving him kind of the bigger picture or maybe I should have given him more time? Like I felt like it just wasn't working when we started out. And usually that gut instinct is, uh, is, is right for me. It has been in the past at least. Sure. So a couple of questions for you. Um, <clears throat> was this a side gig for him? What did he have a nine to five and he was doing this on the yeah, side? So it was, uh, yeah. It was side work for yeah. him. So, and that was my, that was my initial take because generally what happens is when you're working with uh, somebody on a freelance basis and they're working on something on the side, um, their, their, you know, creative instincts and their desire and their passion don't get 100% invested into what you're doing because you know, they're doing it in their spare time. So maybe initially they like the idea and they're like, oh man, this is great. You should try this and do this. And oh, I'm going to test this feature because it looks like it's broken. But then after a couple of weeks, that starts to get old and you're not playing video games or you're not watching football because you're working on this other thing that you've committed to and your interests and all of that stuff start to fall. And then you only do what you're supposed to do, which is be a C student, which is get these features done. And it happens all the time. Yeah, I was spending, I was going back and spending so much time like fixing stuff that it was just got annoying. It's like, why am I doing this? I, I need to hire people that, um, and, and all the other people I've hired have been really good about kind of making suggestions and being, you know, really interested in, in the work that, that I'm trying to do. And so, you know, while this, while we're going to talk about employees, I mean, I think it also, this also applies to contractors as well as, you know, anyone you're working with when, When do you make that decision to, you know, kind of cut them and and go forward in a different direction? Sure. And, you know, this, this, this doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, related to somebody who, who was doing a project on the side. Like I said, in my, in my question to you was, was this a side gig to them? It it, it happens all the time, regardless. If you're a full-time employee, you know, maybe you just don't have the drive and, and your idea of a job is to just do what you're asked and never go above and beyond well those are the people that kind of end up being bottom bottom feeders their whole lives or or they may they get stuck in the middle of the pack they they never get um cut during a reduction in force but they never get promoted because they're not great right but they just kind of hover in there like i said they're a c student there's a lot of that you know you're you're paid to do a job you do only your job and you don't ever see yourself outside of that box not everybody is an entrepreneur or creative or um, you know, has a lot of initiative like we do. Um, so th- this is a common problem. It, it happens in every industry, not just software. Um, it's just uh, it's just a matter of who you are as a person and your character. Like, are you going to go above and beyond or are you just going to do what's asked of you? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the kind of direction I wanted to take this episode is, 
is more of, um, you know, their, your employees are doing an okay job. They're kind of, kind of doing that, but you know, when's the right time to let them go, even if they're kind of doing the, the, the level of work you request and they're not going above and beyond. And maybe some ways that you can get people to get more invested and, and to go above and beyond. And I know we talked about this before is, um, you know, that accountability and that under, that connection with the customer, with that larger vision, you know, in my specific instance, I felt like maybe by breaking the problem down into the, just these small tasks, I wasn't giving them the perspective of what, what we were trying to do, like the broad vision, right? And so they weren't really, even though they were a contractor, you know, with, when I work with employees as well, it's like you want to get them bought into the, the vision of what you're trying to do. I mean, when you're, when you're hiring people, you're really selling them on that vision. Um, and you want to get them to buy in and be interested because, you know, if you can get that buy-in and interest, that's when people really, you know, go be of and beyond and, and they understand the implications of what you're trying to do. And when they're connecting with, the, with your customers, then they're personally, um, you know, kind of involved in success or failure of your company. Yeah, I think if you, in your scenario, um, I don't think it's anything you did. I think it's just, you know, the, the person that you were working with. But um, I think, you know, if you can paint a picture as to what the vision of a product is and, hey, go get this job done, you'll know you'll have the right person if you don't have to give them tasks broken down into small, minuscule chunks. If you just say, here's the runway, I've paved it for you. Now go fly an airline down it, you know, go do your job. Right. So, but if you have to break it down, then you, you know that you're probably not hitting the right chord with that person, um, at least in terms of vision. So maybe then it's time to have a conversation with them about a couple of things. Number one would be, Hey, do you understand what we're trying to build here? This is, this is a vision. This is where we'd like to go with it. This is something you're passionate about. Um, but then also say, you know, look, you're getting your tasks done, but, you're only getting your tasks done. You're not identifying other areas of improvement for improvement. You're not identifying potential bugs that you've created by working on feature A and now you've broke feature B. Like, and, and just have those conversations. And that's something that, you know, especially with junior and mid-level guys, you have to do on a regular basis anyway. Uh, but don't forget to praise them for the stuff that they've done good. But to answer your question, how do you know uh, when it's time to, to fire or let go uh, someone in, Really, it's if, if you're not able to move forward at a pace that, that the company is moving forward at and this individual is holding you back. That's when it's time to move on. Yeah, that, that's basically what happened with this case is that I could just tell it wasn't going to work out. And I feel like when, you're, when people are just starting out, you might need to give them more specific information, like yeah. more detailed information. And so that's what I was trying to judge. Is it just, you know, is it just them trying to learn? Cause like there is a runway or a learning period um, where people are trying to get caught up to speed. And so they're not going to be, you know, as quick doing things uh, maybe in the yeah. first couple of weeks. So you need to give them that, that time period to learn. But then I think you can tell pretty quickly after that um, whether or not they're going to be a good fit for what you're trying to do. And in so, some positions it's okay just to do, the work that you're trying to do in other positions, more, maybe more senior level people or more, you know, kind of architects or kind of visionaries. You need people that are going to be creative and think outside the box and where you can just give them like general direction. And um, I think it's those, those kind of people are really valuable people that you can give general direction to. And so, you know, if you're listening to this and you know, you're, you're working for a company, like try to find ways that you can, you can do maybe do better at that if you want to excel within your company um, is try to try to figure out ways that you can you think out of the outside of the box and kind of push the product forward or or think in new directions and not just follow the task and I know sometimes that can be difficult uh, with with management and things like that they just want you to get stuff done but if there's ways that you can be creative outside the box and then for entrepreneurs in the company you know if you're a founder if you're a manager you want to figure out ways that you can get that creativity out of your employees um, and just kind of provide that general direction to them so that they can, you know, they can improve. And I, I found over time with all the products that I've worked on is that when you, when you provide only that general direction and really clear of what you're trying to do, you know, the people that I work with produce way better results than what I would do alone, right? The team itself produces mm -hmm. a lot better results. And I think you'll find that that happens as well with, um, you know, with your teams. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, there's a couple of things. You know, number one is if you're if you are a manager or an owner or, or founder or whatever, if you're if you're 
person in question is not coming to you saying, look, you know, mentioning ways to improve or even asking about things, if they're just doing their tasks and that's it, it's probably a pretty good indication of how well they're invested, right? If they're not asking you about the future vision, if they're not saying, hey, I, I saw in the code that we could change this and make it more efficient or it'll transfer less data or, you know, whatever, or it won't crash as much. That's an initiative, right? And those are the people that, that are going to be rock stars, you know, and if you're okay with having somebody who just gets their tasks done, that's fine, you know, but you may at some point, you know, want somebody who's, who's going to, you know, work for you so that you're not working as much. Like you said, you had to go and do a lot of additional work because things weren't getting done. And see, so the second point I wanted to make is that you see this a lot with outsourced developers, um, overseas developers, you're, you know, you're going, you're getting what you pay for. You're, you're paying as little as possible uh, to build a product and you want it built really quick. Well, number one, the, the difference between the development in, in those types of environments is different than what you get when you hire a full-time senior developer. Um, and so what happens is, yeah, you may have four or five guys somewhere in Russia or Philippines or India, but what happens is they're only doing the tests that they're asked to do. They're not usually, if you find a good shop, they, they are very good, but they're usually just doing the tests that are assigned to them. And that creates a lot of pain points. They don't understand the long-term vision uh, they don't uh, take the initiative and that becomes very frustrating. And that's why outsourced development has such a bad rap because all they're expected to do is the task that you give them. And that's the same thing with a bad apple uh, in, your, in your local development team. Yeah, I think, you know, if we if you go back and listen to Casey's episode where she was talking about um, how she was hiring her team and she was having problems, you know, when you look at just those development shops that are just trying to you know, get the hours in charge. They're not look, they weren't helping her with her large, larger, larger vision, right. And how she wanted to create the product. And so you really have to be careful about that. I mean, it can be, it can be um, kind of a lure almost to say, Oh, well, I can go hire this develop, this development team really cheap to get stuff done. But you know, I've found in the long run, you really pay for that because you get code that's not maintainable. You get a product that doesn't really match your vision. And so you're always playing catch up. Um, yeah. and so if you can bring, if you can bring in those people that are architects that really, you know, can help you push your vision forward, then, you know, that will help you in the long term. And the, the other thing I want to mention too, is that when people are giving you their ideas, you need to be very careful, um, that you don't you kind of kill that initiative, right. Mm -hmm. By, by basically saying, you know, no, we're not going to do that constantly or making them jump through a bunch of hurdles to get things yeah. done. I mean, when I was in the corporate world, that happened to me all the time. And it just, it drains you. And after a while, you're just like, you give up, right? And you don't want to push those ideas forward because you know the momentum that it would take to get those things pushed forward is so great. And you just, you don't want to go through that anymore. And so you need to be mindful when your employees are, are mentioning ideas. And I know we, we, you chatted about this in one of our previous episodes is that you find outlets for them to be creative, maybe at a future date or or maybe in an alternate way if you're, if you're struggling with kind of timelines, but you need to make sure that outlet's there for people to, to bubble up those ideas and that they're given the freedom to kind of work on things. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the last thing I want to say on this topic is that if you're dealing with a contractor, um, you know, watch yourself, just make sure that, you know, the, the agreements that are, have been made, if you require giving them a certain amount of notice for termination of that contract, make sure you adhere to that so that you're not in breach. And the second thing is if you are a, if it's a full-time employee, make sure that you follow the rules of whatever hiring agreement you use there. So the big, the, the lesson is don't just, you know, if, if you require to give them some type of warning before they're terminated, you better give them a warning before they're terminated. So make sure you follow all that to protect yourself and your company. Yeah. And document things and that sort of thing. And I mean, you want, you want people to succeed, I think. And you should, if you hired someone, you should try to give them, I guess, the benefit of the doubt and provide them every avenue to be successful and talk to them. And I think that's one thing is to bring it up sooner rather than later. Um, you know, a lot of times people wait for, they only do performance reviews every year, right? And then everything comes out at that, at that performance review. If you, can, if you can talk to them on a consistent basis and, you know, let your thoughts known, like don't let it boil up into this big thing because they might not be aware that they're, you know, not meeting expectations or whatever. So if you can, if you can make that clear and, you know, really address the problems as they come up, I think you'll find that people are able to adjust better and that you won't have to go through maybe the firing process if they're not, um, you know, if they're not a good fit. Yeah. And sometimes that's the bottom line. Sometimes 
They may be doing everything that they, they need to do. They may even be going above and beyond, but sometimes it's just not a great fit and that's okay. And, and you just identify it and you move on and you find somebody who is a good fit. Sounds good. So hopefully this, hopefully this was helpful and uh, we'll talk to you next week.